you want to ensure people putting the right things into your spreadsheet and not messing stuff up, then you probably ought to be using data validation. I found a great video on the Excel Champs channel, six super amazing tips for data validation. And I learned a lot from it and I just want to go through some of the things I learned so you can learn them too. Hi, I'm John, this is Up For Excel. Obviously, I want you to go and check out Excel Champs video. You'll get a lot more from it. I'm just gonna give you a, a bit of an overview. So the video is called Six Classy Data Validation Tips Stroke Excel Tutorials. So the key thing about this video is it's got some ways of using data validation that I hadn't, hadn't previously crossed my mind. There's nothing particularly complex. It's just um, some great ways of doing stuff that I think I thought, wow, well, yeah, you know, I've not actually thought about doing that myself. The first thing is that he tests the formulas before he puts them into data validation in normal cells, because any formula pretty much that you can come up with in an Excel cell that comes up with either true or false, you could use as a data validation. On every occasion, he uses that as a, as a method. So he's using there, I don't know if you could just say the is text formula, and it's gonna give you true or false. Well, of course, then you can put that in your data validation rule. It's gonna give you either true or false. If I want that, he's saying equals is text, uh, that cell, right? So that's false. If I type in John, obviously, it's gonna be true. Uh, but if I type in 12, it's gonna be false. So how do you do that? Well, here's your formula. You're just gonna go in there. So F2 and Control A, Control C. Go to here, your data validation, um, any rule. Actually, we want custom formula. Paste it in the formula, click OK. So now, if I type in John, nothing happens, yeah? You don't even need that formula anymore. Type in 12. Now I get a data validation error. So nothing amazing about that particular formula, it's just a great little technique that I saw him use and thought, yeah, that's great. The second thing that I thought was good as well was this little tip, which is larger values than the previous cell. So this time, if we put 12 in there, we want this to be higher rather than lower. So again, we could just put equal. So if that is greater than that, and we just put a true or a false in there. True or false, uh, one is false. So it's just gotta be higher or lower than the cell above, again. Same thing, you just go take that formula in there. And of course the first cell you can't put it on, but data validation, again, formula, off you go. Now, if I put two in, it's fine. If I put one in, can't do it. Three in, it's fine. Change that to three. That one I now try to put in three again, won't have it. So, <laughs> brilliant. So carrying on, next one then, non-duplicates. So what formula is he using here? Well, he's gonna put a count involving the entire range this time. So this is another sort of thing that I'd never really thought of doing, using an entire range of cells to establish the criteria for the data validation. So he does a count if here, and obviously he wants that count if to be um, greater than or equal to one, or less than one. So here in his formula, you see in the data validation, he's gonna put equals, let's just see what it puts. It equals one. So again, it's saying that the count of the item has got to equal one, and that stops you putting in any kind of duplicates. So the way this works then, essentially we just need a count in there to count. So we're just gonna say 
equals the count F. Got all of that criteria. F4 to fix it equals that. We don't want to fix that. Equals one. So that's going to be false all the way down at the moment. But you can see if I put in. So as soon as we get to two, we end up with it being false. So as long as we have unique items in there, see the twos now appear as false. So we know that's going to work. So we just, again, we can take that formula and we can slap it in as the data validation formula for all of that. So now we can say, well, so let's say we want um, John, Paul, why not George and Ringo, hey? And then I'll add me to that list. Oh no, you can't do that, you've already got John, yeah? So that's how that one works. Data validation beginning with a unique character first. So in this, what's his formula? He's basically going to say he's using the exact function to say that he wants certain characters to be exactly the same as others. So in here, he wants it to start with EC, for example. So this could be useful if you've got a field where you're putting in customer numbers or something and say you everything starts with a C. If you don't want somebody typing in anything that doesn't start with a C, you can say, well, the first left character needs to be a C. Exactly the same principle, really. I'm not going to labour the point by going back into the Excel spreadsheet to show you, but that's for starting characters. And of course, with this, you could use mid or right or any kind of text functions. You could even use kind of wildcards in there or whatever to ensure that, for example, the the data contains something. So you could use like the find or the search function in there to do that as well. As long as you can create a formula that will come up with either true or false at the end, you can use it in that data validation. So that's another great idea. Now this one I thought was a unique use as well, which was days of the week. And in this, he uses the weekday function to determine whether or not it's a particular day of the week. Now, and what he does is essentially say, well, let's make sure it's a Monday to Friday. So if you said Monday through Sunday is numbers one to seven, you could say, well, if the weekday is greater than or less than six, must be a weekday. So you get true or false for that. That stops people putting in week weekend dates, for example, which would be great if you're like dealing with projects or something, start dates, end dates. You know, you're unlikely to want them finishing and starting on, say, Sunday, perhaps. So another great use. This one, also something I'd not really thought of doing myself, and that is making sure that you get a particular total of a series of cells. Immediately I saw this, I thought, I know what I'd use this for. When you need a column of numbers to add up to 100%. So often that is the case. You could just basically block or warn even people if the total of their column is going to be more than or less than 100%. So one way you could do this, for example, let's just take another column over here. And Imagine I want this lot to be a hundred percent. So control shift five turns them into a percent. If I have to make that equal to a hundred percent, I should put equals the sum of all of that less than one, right? True. And if I fix that, so true to the, the method here, that one, put that as the data validation formula. There we go. So now I can't go over, it's not gonna allow that. So 12, uh, nine, and obviously anything above one in there. Uh, why that's coming up like that, 
I know why, because I said less than one. <laughs> so obviously it should have been less than or equal to one. Deliberate error there. That gives me the 100%. So we can't go over, but we can go under. That would be a great use case for that sort of a formula. Definitely go and check out the Excel Champs videos. Links in the description. Hope you found that useful. I'll see you soon.